Betelgeuse, also designated Alpha Orionis, Alpha Orionis abbreviated Alpha Ori, Alpha Ori, is on average the ninth brightest star in the night sky and second brightest in the constellation of Orion. It is distinctly reddish, and is a semiregular variable star whose apparent magnitude varies between 0.0 and 1.3, the widest range of any first magnitude star. Betelgeuse is one of three stars that make up the winter triangle asterism, and it marks the center of the winter hexagon. It would be the brightest star in the night sky if the human eye could view all wavelengths of radiation. Classified as a red supergiant of spectral type M1-2, the star is one of the largest stars visible to the naked eye. If Betelgeuse were at the center of the solar system, its surface would extend past the asteroid belt, completely engulfing the orbits of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and possibly Jupiter. However, there are several other red supergiants in the Milky Way that could be larger, such as Mu Cephei, VV Cephei A, and VY Canis Majoris. Calculations of its mass range from slightly under 10 to a little over 20 times that of the Sun. It is calculated to be 640 light-years away, yielding an absolute magnitude of about minus 6. Less than 10 million years old, Betelgeuse has evolved rapidly because of its high mass. Having been ejected from its birthplace in the Orion OB1 association, which includes the stars in Orion's belt, this runaway star has been observed moving through the interstellar medium at a speed of 30 km per second, creating a bow shock over four light years wide. Currently in a late stage of stellar evolution, the supergiant is expected to explode as a supernova within the next million years. In 1920, Betelgeuse became the first extrasolar star to have the angular size of its photosphere measured. Subsequent studies have reported an angular diameter apparent size ranging from 0.042 to 0.056 arcseconds, with the differences ascribed to the non-sphericity, limb darkening, pulsations, and varying appearance at different wavelengths. It is also surrounded by a complex, asymmetric envelope roughly 250 times the size of the star, caused by mass loss from the star itself. The angular diameter of Betelgeuse is only exceeded by R. Doradus and the Sun. <laughs> Nomenclature Alpha Orionis, Latinized to Alpha Orionis is the star's bare designation. The traditional name Betelgeuse is derived from the Arabic apt al-Jza it al-Jawza, meaning, the underarm of Orion, or it al-Jza yad al-Jawza, meaning, the hand of Orion. See below. In 2016, the International Astronomical Union organized a working group on star names WGSN to catalog and standardize proper names for stars. The WGSN's first bulletin of July 2016 included a table of the first two batches of names approved by the WGSN, which included Betelgeuse for this star. It is now so entered in the IAU catalog of star names. Topic. Observational history Betelgeuse and its red coloration have been noted since antiquity. The classical astronomer Ptolemy described its color as hypochros, hypochros, a term that was later described by a translator of Ula Beg's Zij-i Sultani as rubedo, Latin for ruddiness. In the 19th century, before modern systems of stellar classification, Angelo Secchi included Betelgeuse as one of the prototypes for his class three orange to red stars. By contrast, three centuries before Ptolemy, Chinese astronomers observed Betelgeuse as having a yellow coloration. If accurate, such an observation could suggest the star was in a yellow supergiant phase around the beginning of the Christian era, a possibility given current research into the complex circumstellar environment of these stars. Topic. Nascent discoveries The variation in Betelgeuse's brightness was first described in 1836 by Sir John Herschel, when he published his observations in Outlines of Astronomy. From 1836 to 1840, he noticed significant changes in magnitude when Betelgeuse outshone Rigel in October 1837 and again in November 1839. A ten-year quiescent period followed, then in 1849, Herschel noted another short cycle of variability, which peaked in 1852. Later observers recorded unusually high maxima with an interval of years, but only small variations from 1957 to 1967. 
The records of the American Association of Variable Star Observers AAVSO show a maximum brightness of 0.2 in 1933 and 1942, and a minimum of 1.2, observed in 1927 and 1941. This variability in brightness may explain why Johann Baer, with the publication of his Uranometria in 1603, designated the star Alpha as it probably rivaled the usually brighter Rigel beta. From Arctic latitudes, Betelgeuse's red color and higher location in the sky than Rigel meant the Inuit regarded it as brighter, and one local name was Ulloriajwak large star. In 1920, Albert Michelson and Francis Pease mounted a 6-meter interferometer on the front of the 2.5-meter telescope at Mount Wilson Observatory. Helped by John Anderson, the trio measured the angular diameter of Betelgeuse at 0.047 a figure which resulted in a diameter of 3.84 times 108 kilometers 2.58 astronomical units based on the parallax value of 0.018 however limb darkening and measurement errors resulted in uncertainty about the accuracy of these measurements the 1950s and 1960s saw two developments that would affect stellar convection theory in red supergiants, the stratoscope projects and the 1958 publication of Structure and Evolution of the Stars, principally the work of Martin Schwarzschild and his colleague at Princeton University, Richard Harm. This book disseminated ideas on how to apply computer technologies to create stellar models, while the stratoscope projects, by taking balloon-borne telescopes above the Earth's turbulence, produced some of the finest images of solar granules and sunspots ever seen, thus confirming the existence of convection in the solar atmosphere. Topic. Imaging breakthroughs Astronomers in the 1970s saw some major advances in astronomical imaging technology beginning with Antoine Liberi's invention of speckle interferometry, a process that significantly reduced the blurring effect caused by astronomical seeing. It increased the optical resolution of ground-based telescopes, allowing for more precise measurements of Betelgeuse's photosphere. With improvements in infrared telescopy atop Mount Wilson, Mount Locke and Mauna Kea in Hawaii, astrophysicists began peering into the complex circumstellar shells surrounding the supergiant, causing them to suspect the presence of huge gas bubbles resulting from convection. But it was not until the late 1980s and early 1990s, when Betelgeuse became a regular target for aperture masking interferometry, that breakthroughs occurred in visible light and infrared imaging. Pioneered by John E. Baldwin and colleagues of the Cavendish Astrophysics Group, the new technique employed a small mask with several holes in the telescope pupil plane, converting the aperture into an ad hoc interferometric array. The technique contributed some of the most accurate measurements of Betelgeuse while revealing bright spots on the star's photosphere. These were the first optical and infrared images of a stellar disk other than the Sun, taken first from ground-based interferometers and later from higher resolution observations of the Coast Telescope. The bright patches, or hot spots, observed with these instruments appeared to corroborate a theory put forth by Schwarzschild decades earlier of massive convection cells dominating the stellar surface. In 1995, the Hubble Space Telescope's faint object camera captured an ultraviolet image with a resolution superior to that obtained by ground-based interferometers. The first conventional telescope image or direct image in NASA terminology of the disk of another star. Because ultraviolet light is absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere, observations at these wavelengths are best performed by space telescopes. Like earlier pictures, this image contained a bright patch indicating a region in the southwestern quadrant 2000 K hotter than the stellar surface. Subsequent ultraviolet spectra taken with the Goddard high-resolution spectrograph suggested that the hot spot was one of Betelgeuse's poles of rotation. This would give the rotational axis an inclination of about 20 degrees to the direction of Earth, and a position angle from celestial north of about 55 degrees. Topic. Recent studies In a study published in December 2000, the star's diameter was measured with the Infrared Spatial Interferometer at mid-infrared wavelengths producing a limb-darkened estimate of 55.2 plus or minus 0.5 milliarcseconds mass, a figure entirely consistent with Michelson's findings 80 years earlier. 
At the time of its publication, the estimated parallax from the Hipparchos mission was 7.63 plus or minus 1.64 Mos, yielding an estimated radius for Betelgeuse of 3.6 astronomical units. However, an infrared interferometric study published in 2009 announced that the star had shrunk by 15% since 1993 at an increasing rate without a significant diminution in magnitude. Subsequent observations suggest that the apparent contraction may be due to shell activity in the star's extended atmosphere. In addition to the star's diameter, questions have arisen about the complex dynamics of Betelgeuse's extended atmosphere. The mass that makes up galaxies is recycled as stars are formed and destroyed, and red supergiants are major contributors, yet the process by which mass is lost remains a mystery. With advances in interferometric methodologies, astronomers may be close to resolving this conundrum. In July 2009, images released by the European Southern Observatory, taken by the ground-based Very Large Telescope Interferometer VLTI, showed a vast plume of gas extending 30 astronomical units from the star into the surrounding atmosphere. This mass ejection was equal to the distance between the Sun and Neptune and is one of multiple events occurring in Betelgeuse's surrounding atmosphere. Astronomers have identified at least six shells surrounding Betelgeuse. Solving the mystery of mass loss in the late stages of a star's evolution may reveal those factors that precipitate the explosive deaths of these stellar giants. Visibility In the night sky, Betelgeuse is easy to spot with the naked eye owing to its distinctive orange-red color. In the northern hemisphere, beginning in January of each year, it can be seen rising in the east just after sunset. By mid-September to mid-March best in mid-December, it is visible to virtually every inhabited region of the globe, except for a few research stations in Antarctica at latitudes south of 82 degrees. In May moderate northern latitudes or June southern latitudes, the red supergiant can be seen briefly on the western horizon after sunset, reappearing again a few months later on the eastern horizon before sunrise. In the intermediate period June to July, it is invisible to the naked eye visible only with a telescope in daylight, unless around midday when the sun is below horizon on Antarctic regions between 70 degrees and 80 degrees south latitude. Betelgeuse is a variable star whose brightness ranges between 0.0 and 1.3. There are periods when it will surpass Procyon to become the seventh brightest star, and occasionally even brighter. At its faintest Betelgeuse can fall behind Deneb and Mimosa, themselves both slightly variable, to be the 20th brightest star. Betelgeuse has a color index BV of 1.85, a figure which points to its advanced redness. The photosphere has an extended atmosphere, which displays strong lines of emission rather than absorption, a phenomenon that occurs when a star is surrounded by a thick gaseous envelope rather than ionized. This extended gaseous atmosphere has been observed moving away from and towards Betelgeuse, depending on radial velocity fluctuations in the photosphere. Betelgeuse is the brightest near-infrared source in the sky with a J-band magnitude of minus 2.99. As a result, only about 13% of the star's radiant energy is emitted in the form of visible light. If human eyes were sensitive to radiation at all wavelengths, Betelgeuse would appear as the brightest star in the sky. Topic. Star system Various catalogues list up to nine faint visual companions to Betelgeuse. They are at distances of about 1 to 4 arc minutes and all are fainter than tenth magnitude. Betelgeuse is generally considered to be a single isolated star and a runaway star, not currently associated with any cluster or star forming region, although its birthplace is unclear. Two spectroscopic companions have been proposed to the red supergiant star. Analysis of polarization data from 1968 through 1983 indicated a close companion with a periodic orbit of about 2.1 years. Using speckle interferometry, the team concluded that the closer of the two companions was located at 0.06 plus or minus 0.01 approximately 9 astronomical units from the main star with a position angle PA of 273 degrees, an orbit that would potentially place it within the star's chromosphere. The more distant companion was estimated at 0.51 plus or minus 0.01 approximately 77 astronomical units with a PA of 278 degrees. 
Further studies have found no evidence for these companions or have actively refuted their existence, but the possibility of a close companion contributing to the overall flux has never been fully ruled out. High resolution interferometry of Betelgeuse and its vicinity, far beyond the technology of the 1980s and 90s, have not detected any companions. Topic: <laughs> Distance measurements. Parallax is the apparent change of the position of an object, measured in seconds of arc, caused by the change of position of the observer of that object. As the Earth orbits the Sun, every star is seen to shift by a fraction of an arc second, which measure, combined with the baseline provided by the Earth's orbit gives the distance to that star. Since the first successful parallax measurement by Friedrich Bessel in 1838, astronomers have been puzzled by Betelgeuse's apparent distance. Knowledge of the star's distance improves the accuracy of other stellar parameters, such as luminosity that, when combined with an angular diameter, can be used to calculate the physical radius and effective temperature. Luminosity and isotopic abundances can also be used to estimate the stellar age and mass. In 1920, when the first interferometric studies were performed on the star's diameter, the assumed parallax was 0.0180 arcseconds. This equated to a distance of 56 parsecs PC or roughly 180 light years Li, producing not only an inaccurate radius for the star but every other stellar characteristic. Since then, there has been ongoing work to measure the distance of Betelgeuse, with proposed distances as high as 400% or about 1,300 light years. Before the publication of the Hipparchos catalog 1997, there were two conflicting parallax measurements for Betelgeuse. The first, in 1991, gave a parallax of pi topic 9.8 plus or minus 4.7 mas, yielding a distance of roughly 102% or 330 light years. The second was the Hipparchos input catalog, 1993, with a trigonometric parallax of pi. 5 plus or minus 4 mas, a distance of 200% or 650 light years. Given this uncertainty, researchers were adopting a wide range of distance estimates, leading to significant variances in the calculation of the star's attributes. The results from the Hipparchos mission were released in 1997. The measured parallax of Betelgeuse was pi. 7.63 plus or minus 1.64 mas, which equated to a distance of 131% or roughly 430 light years, and had a smaller reported error than previous measurements. However, later evaluation of the Hipparchos parallax measurements for variable stars like Betelgeuse found that the uncertainty of these measurements had been underestimated. In 2007, an improved figure of pi. 6.55 plus or minus 0.83 was calculated, hence a much tighter error factor yielding a distance of roughly 152 plus or minus 20% or 520 plus or minus 73 light years. In 2008, using the Very Large Array VLA, produced a radio solution of pi equals 5.07 plus or minus 1.10 mas, equaling a distance of 197 plus or minus 45% or 643 plus or minus 146 light years. As the researcher, Harper, points out, the revised Hipparchos parallax leads to a larger distance 152 plus or minus 20 percent than the original, however, the astrometric solution still requires a significant cosmic noise of 2.4 mas. Given these results it is clear that the Hipparchos data still contain systematic errors of unknown origin. Although the radio data also have systematic errors, the Harper solution combines the datasets in the hope of mitigating such errors. An updated result from further observations with Alma and E. Merlin gives a parallax of 4.51 plus or minus 0.8 mas and a distance of 222 plus 34 minus 48 percent. Further observations have resulted in a slightly revised parallax of 4.51 plus or minus 0.80. Although the European Space Agency's current Gaia mission was not expected to produce good results for stars brighter than the approximately V equals 6 saturation limit of the mission's instruments, actual operation has shown good performance on objects to about magnitude plus 3. 
Forced observations of brighter stars mean that final results should be available for all bright stars and a parallax for Betelgeuse will be published an order of magnitude more accurate than currently available. Variability Betelgeuse is classified as a semiregular variable star, indicating that some periodicity is noticeable in the brightness changes, but amplitudes may vary, cycles may have different lengths, and there may be standstills or periods of irregularity. It is placed in subgroup SRC, these are pulsating red supergiants with amplitudes around one magnitude and periods from tens to hundreds of days. Betelgeuse typically shows only small brightness changes near to magnitude plus 0.5, although at its extremes it can become as bright as magnitude 0.0 or as faint as magnitude plus 1.3. Betelgeuse is listed in the general catalog of variable stars with a possible period of 2,335 days. More detailed analyses have shown a main period near 400 days and a longer secondary period around 2,100 days. Radial pulsations of red supergiants are well modeled and show that periods of a few hundred days are typically due to fundamental and first overtone pulsation. Lines in the spectrum of Betelgeuse show Doppler shifts indicating radial velocity changes corresponding, very roughly, to the brightness changes. This demonstrates the nature of the pulsations in size, although corresponding temperature and spectral variations are not clearly seen. Variations in the diameter of Betelgeuse have also been measured directly. The source of the long secondary periods is unknown, but they certainly aren't due to radial pulsations. Interferometric observations of Betelgeuse have shown hotspots that are thought to be created by massive convection cells, a significant fraction of the diameter of the star and each emitting 5–10% of the total light of the star. One theory to explain long secondary periods is that they are caused by the evolution of such cells combined with the rotation of the star. Other theories include close binary interactions, chromospheric magnetic activity influencing mass loss, or non radial pulsations such as G modes. In addition to the discrete dominant periods, small amplitude stochastic variations are seen. It is proposed that this is due to granulation, similar to the same effect on the Sun but on a much larger scale. Aboriginal people from the Great Victoria Desert of South Australia observed the variability of Betelgeuse and incorporated it into their oral traditions as Nyiruna Orion. Nyiruna generates fire magic in his right hand Betelgeuse to gain access to the Ugarilya sisters of the Pleiades, but is prevented from doing so by the eldest sister Kambaguda Hyades, who kicks sand into his face, causing his fire magic to dissipate in his humiliation. This is described in the oral tradition as a cyclic process, with Nyiruna's right hand brightening and fading over time. Diameter On 13 December 1920, Betelgeuse became the first star outside the solar system to have the angular size of its photosphere measured. Although interferometry was still in its infancy, the experiment proved a success. The researchers, using a uniform disk model, determined that Betelgeuse had a diameter of 0.047 arcseconds, although the stellar disk was likely 17% larger due to the limb darkening, resulting in an estimate for its angular diameter of about 0.055. Since then, other studies have produced angular diameters that range from 0.042 to 0.069 arcseconds. Combining these data with historical distance estimates of 180 to 815 light years yields a projected radius of the stellar disk of anywhere from 1.2 to 8.9 astronomical units. Using the solar system for comparison, the orbit of Mars is about 1.5 astronomical units, Ceres in the asteroid belt 2.7 astronomical units, Jupiter 5.5 astronomical units. So, assuming Betelgeuse occupying the place of the Sun, its photosphere might extend beyond the Jovian orbit, not quite reaching Saturn at 9.5 astronomical units. The precise diameter has been hard to define for several reasons. Betelgeuse is a pulsating star, so its diameter changes with time. The star has no definable edge. As limb darkening causes the optical emissions to vary in color and decrease the farther one extends out from the center. Betelgeuse is surrounded by a circumstellar envelope composed of matter ejected from the star matter which absorbs and emits light making it difficult to define the photosphere of the star. 
Measurements can be taken at varying wavelengths within the electromagnetic spectrum and the difference in reported diameters can be as much as 30 to 35%, yet comparing one finding with another is difficult as the star's apparent size differs depending on the wavelength used. Studies have shown that the measured angular diameter is considerably larger at ultraviolet wavelengths, decreases through the visible to a minimum in the near-infrared, and increase again in the mid-infrared spectrum. Atmospheric twinkling limits the resolution obtainable from ground-based telescopes since turbulence degrades angular resolution. To overcome these challenges, researchers have employed various solutions. Astronomical interferometry, first conceived by Hippolyte Fizeau in 1868, was the seminal concept that has enabled major improvements in modern telescopy and led to the creation of the Michelson interferometer in the 1880s, and the first successful measurement of Betelgeuse. Just as human depth perception increases when two eyes instead of one perceive an object, Fizeau proposed the observation of stars through two apertures instead of one to obtain interferences that would furnish information on the star's spatial intensity distribution. The science evolved quickly and multiple aperture interferometers are now used to capture speckled images, which are synthesized using Fourier analysis to produce a portrait of high resolution. It was this methodology that identified the hotspots on Betelgeuse in the 1990s. Other technological breakthroughs include adaptive optics, space observatories like Hipparcos, Hubble and Spitzer, and the astronomical multi-beam recombiner AMBER, which combines the beams of three telescopes simultaneously, allowing researchers to achieve milliarcsecond spatial resolution, which part of the electromagnetic spectrum, the visible, near-infrared near or mid-infrared mirror produces the most accurate angular measurement is still debated. In 1996, Betelgeuse was shown to have a uniform disk of 56.6 plus or minus 1.0 mass. In 2000, the SSL team produced another measure of 54.7 plus or minus 0.3 mass, ignoring any possible contribution from hotspots, which are less noticeable in the mid-infrared. Also included was a theoretical allowance for limb darkening, yielding a diameter of 55.2 plus or minus 0.5 mass. The earlier estimate equates to a radius of roughly 5.6 astronomical units or 1200 r, assuming the 2008 Harper distance of 197.0 plus or minus 45%, a figure roughly the size of the Jovian orbit of 5.5 astronomical units, published in 2009 in Astronomy magazine and a year later in NASA's Astronomy Picture of the Day. A team of astronomers working in the near-infrared announced in 2004, that the more accurate photospheric measurement was 43.33 plus or minus 0.04 mass. The study also put forth an explanation as to why varying wavelengths from the visible to mid-infrared produce different diameters, the star is seen through a thick, warm extended atmosphere. At short wavelengths the visible spectrum the atmosphere scatters light, thus slightly increasing the star's diameter. At near-infrared wavelengths K and L bands, the scattering is negligible, so the classical photosphere can be directly seen. In the mid-infrared the scattering increases once more, causing the thermal emission of the warm atmosphere to increase the apparent diameter. Studies with the IOTA and VLTI published in 2009 brought strong support to Perrin's analysis and yielded diameters ranging from 42.57 to 44.28 mas with comparatively insignificant margins of error. In 2011, a third estimate in the near-infrared corroborating the 2009 numbers, this time showing a limb-darkened disk diameter of 42.49 plus or minus 0.06 mass. Consequently, if one combines the smaller Hipparcos distance from Van Leeuwen of 152 plus or minus 20% with Perrin's angular measurement of 43.33 mass, a near-infrared photospheric estimate would equate to about 3.4 astronomical units or 730 r. A 2014 paper derives an angular diameter of 42.28 mass equivalent to a 41.01 mass uniform disk using H and K band observations made with the VLTI AMBER instrument. Central to this discussion, it was announced in 2009 that the radius of Betelgeuse had shrunk from 1993 to 2009 by 15%, with the 2008 angular measurement equal to 47.0 mass, not too far from Perrin's estimate. Unlike most earlier papers, this study encompassed a 15-year period at one specific wavelength. Earlier studies have typically lasted one to two years by comparison and have explored multiple wavelengths, often yielding vastly different results. 
The diminution in Betelgeuse's apparent size equates to a range of values between 56.0 plus or minus 0.1 Ma seen in 1993 to 47.0 plus or minus 0.1 Ma seen in 2008, a contraction of almost 0.9 astronomical units in 15 years. What is not fully known is whether this observation is evidence of a rhythmic expansion and contraction of the star's photosphere as astronomers have theorized, and if so, what the periodic cycle might be, although Towns suggested that if a cycle does exist, it is probably a few decades long. Other possible explanations are photospheric protrusions due to convection or a star that is not spherical but asymmetric causing the appearance of expansion and contraction as the star rotates on its axis. The debate about differences between measurements in the mid-infrared, which suggest a possible expansion and contraction of the star, and the near-infrared, which advocates a relatively constant photospheric diameter, remains to be resolved. In a paper published in 2012, the Berkeley team reported that their measurements were dominated by the behavior of cool, optically thick material above the stellar photosphere", indicating that the apparent expansion and contraction may be due to activity in the star's outer shells and not the photosphere itself. This conclusion, if further corroborated, would suggest an average angular diameter for Betelgeuse closer to Perrin's estimate at 43.33 arcseconds, hence a stellar radius of about 3.4 astronomical units, 730R, assuming the shorter Hipparchos distance of 498 plus or minus 73 light years in lieu of Harper's estimate at 643 plus or minus 146 light years. The Gaia spacecraft may clarify assumptions presently used in calculating the size of Betelgeuse's stellar disk. Once considered as having the largest angular diameter of any star in the sky after the Sun, Betelgeuse lost that distinction in 1997 when a group of astronomers measured R. Doradus with a diameter of 57.0 plus or minus 0.5 Mas, although R. Doradus, being much closer to Earth at about 200 light years, has a linear diameter roughly one third that of Betelgeuse. The generally reported radii of large cool stars are Rossland radii, defined as the radius of the photosphere at a specific optical depth of two-thirds. This corresponds to the radius calculated from the effective temperature and bolometric luminosity. The Rossland radius differs from directly measured radii, but there are widely used conversion factors depending on the wavelength used for the angular measurements. For example, a measured angular diameter of 55.6 Mos corresponds to a Rossland mean diameter of 56.2 Mos. The Rossland radius derived from angular measurements of the star's photosphere rather than an extended envelope is 887 r. Properties Betelgeuse is a very large, luminous but cool star classified as an M1-2 Ea Ab Red supergiant. The letter M in this designation means that it is a red star belonging to the M spectral class and therefore has a relatively low photospheric temperature. The Ea Ab suffix luminosity class indicates that it is an intermediate luminosity supergiant, with properties partway between a normal supergiant and a luminous supergiant. Since 1943, the spectrum of Betelgeuse has served as one of the stable anchor points by which other stars are classified. Uncertainty in the star's surface temperature, diameter, and distance make it difficult to achieve a precise measurement of Betelgeuse's luminosity, but research from 2012 quotes a luminosity of around 126,000 L, assuming a distance of 200%. Studies since 2001 report effective temperatures ranging from 3,250 to 3,690 K. Values outside this range have previously been reported, and much of the variation is believed to be real, due to pulsations in the atmosphere. The star is also a slow rotator and the most recent velocity recorded was 5 km per second. Much slower than Antares which has a rotational velocity of 20 km per second. The rotation period depends on Betelgeuse's size and orientation to Earth, but it has been calculated to take 8.4 years to turn on its axis. In 2004, astronomers using computer simulations speculated that even if Betelgeuse is not rotating, it might exhibit large scale magnetic activity in its extended atmosphere, a factor where even moderately strong fields could have a meaningful influence over the star's dust, wind, and mass loss properties. 
A series of spectropolarimetric observations obtained in 2010 with the Bernard Lyot Telescope at Pic du Midi Observatory revealed the presence of a weak magnetic field at the surface of Betelgeuse, suggesting that the giant convective motions of supergiant stars are able to trigger the onset of a small-scale dynamo effect. Mass Betelgeuse has no known orbital companions, so its mass cannot be calculated by that direct method. Modern mass estimates from theoretical modeling have produced values of 9.5 to 21 m, with values of 5 m minus 30 m from older studies. It has been calculated that Betelgeuse began its life as a star of 15 to 20 m, based on a solar luminosity of 90,000 to 150,000. A novel method of determining the supergiant's mass was proposed in 2011, arguing for a current stellar mass of 11.6 m with an upper limit of 16.6 and lower of 7.7 m, based on observations of the star's intensity profile from narrow H-band interferometry and using a photospheric measurement of roughly 4.3 AU or 955 r. Model fitting to evolutionary tracks give a current mass of 19.4 to 19.7 m, from an initial mass of 20 m. Motion The kinematics of Betelgeuse are complex. The age of class M supergiants with an initial mass of 20 m is roughly 10 million years. Starting from its present position and motion a projection back in time would place Betelgeuse around 290 parsecs farther from the galactic plane—an implausible location, as there is no star formation region there. Moreover, Betelgeuse's projected pathway does not appear to intersect with the 25 Ori subassociation or the far younger Orion Nebula Cluster ONC, also known as Ori Ob 1D, particularly since very long baseline array astrometry yields a distance from Betelgeuse to the ONC of between 389 and 414 parsecs. Consequently, it is likely that Betelgeuse has not always had its current motion through space but has changed course at one time or another, possibly the result of a nearby stellar explosion. An observation by the Herschel Space Observatory in January 2013 revealed that the star's winds are crashing against the surrounding interstellar medium. The most likely star formation scenario for Betelgeuse is that it is a runaway star from the Orion OB1 association. Originally a member of a high-mass multiple system within Oriob 1A, Betelgeuse was probably formed about 10 to 12 million years ago, but has evolved rapidly due to its high mass. Like many young stars in Orion whose mass is greater than 10 m, Betelgeuse will use its fuel quickly and not live long. On the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, Betelgeuse has moved off the main sequence and has swelled and cooled to become a red supergiant. Although young, Betelgeuse has exhausted the hydrogen in its core, causing the core to contract under the force of gravity into a hotter and denser state. As a result, it has begun to fuse helium into carbon and oxygen and has ignited a hydrogen shell outside the core. The hydrogen-burning shell and the contracting core cause the outer envelope to expand and cool. Its mass is such that the star will eventually fuse higher elements through neon, magnesium, and silicon all the way to iron, at which point it will collapse and explode, probably as a type II supernova. <laughs> Circumstellar dynamics In the late phase of stellar evolution, massive stars like Betelgeuse exhibit high rates of mass loss, possibly as much as 1 m every 10,000 years, resulting in a complex circumstellar environment that is constantly in flux. In a 2009 paper, stellar mass loss was cited as the key to understanding the evolution of the universe from the earliest cosmological times to the current epoch, and of planet formation and the formation of life itself. However, the physical mechanism is not well understood. When Schwarzschild first proposed his theory of huge convection cells, he argued it was the likely cause of mass loss in evolved supergiants like Betelgeuse. Recent work has corroborated this hypothesis, yet there are still uncertainties about the structure of their convection, the mechanism of their mass loss, the way dust forms in their extended atmosphere, and the conditions which precipitate their dramatic finale as a type II supernova. In 2001, Graham Harper estimated a stellar wind at 0.03 m every 10,000 years, but research since 2009 has provided evidence of episodic mass loss making any total figure for Betelgeuse uncertain. 
Current observations suggest that a star like Betelgeuse may spend a portion of its lifetime as a red supergiant, but then cross back across the HR diagram, pass once again through a brief yellow supergiant phase and then explode as a blue supergiant or wolf rayet star. Astronomers may be close to solving this mystery. They noticed a large plume of gas extending at least six times its stellar radius indicating that Betelgeuse is not shedding matter evenly in all directions. The plume's presence implies that the spherical symmetry of the star's photosphere, often observed in the infrared, is not preserved in its close environment. Asymmetries on the stellar disk had been reported at different wavelengths. However, due to the refined capabilities of the NACO adaptive optics on the VLT, these asymmetries have come into focus. The two mechanisms that could cause such asymmetrical mass loss, were large-scale convection cells or polar mass loss, possibly due to rotation. Probing deeper with ESO's amber, gas in the supergiant's extended atmosphere has been observed vigorously moving up and down, creating bubbles as large as the supergiant itself, leading his team to conclude that such stellar upheaval is behind the massive plume ejection observed by Curvella. Topic. Asymmetric shells In addition to the photosphere, six other components of Betelgeuse's atmosphere have now been identified. They are a molecular environment otherwise known as the molesphere, a gaseous envelope, a chromosphere, a dust environment and two outer shells S1 and S2 composed of carbon monoxide CO. Some of these elements are known to be asymmetric while others overlap. At about 0.45 stellar radii approximately 2 to 3 astronomical units above the photosphere, there may lie a molecular layer known as the molesphere or molecular environment. Studies show it to be composed of water vapor and carbon monoxide with an effective temperature of about 1500 plus or minus 500 K. Water vapor had been originally detected in the supergiant spectrum in the 1960s with the two stratoscope projects but had been ignored for decades. The molesphere may also contain CO and aluminium oxide molecules which could explain the formation of dust particles. The asymmetric gaseous envelope, another cooler region, extends for several radii approximately 10 to 40 astronomical units from the photosphere. It is enriched in oxygen and especially in nitrogen relative to carbon. These composition anomalies are likely caused by contamination by CNO processed material from the inside of Betelgeuse. Radio telescope images taken in 1998 confirm that Betelgeuse has a highly complex atmosphere, with a temperature of 3,450 plus or minus 850 K, similar to that recorded on the star's surface but much lower than surrounding gas in the same region. The VLA images also show this lower temperature gas progressively cools as it extends outward. Although unexpected, it turns out to be the most abundant constituent of Betelgeuse's atmosphere. This alters our basic understanding of red supergiant star atmospheres, explained Jeremy Lim, the team's leader. Instead of the star's atmosphere expanding uniformly due to gas heated to high temperatures near its surface, it now appears that several giant convection cells propel gas from the star's surface into its atmosphere. This is the same region in which Curvella's 2009 finding of a bright plume, possibly containing carbon and nitrogen and extending at least six photospheric radii in the southwest direction of the star, is believed to exist. The chromosphere was directly imaged by the faint object camera on board the Hubble Space Telescope in ultraviolet wavelengths. The images also revealed a bright area in the southwest quadrant of the disk. The average radius of the chromosphere in 1996 was about 2.2 times the optical disk approximately 10 astronomical units and was reported to have a temperature no higher than 5,500 K. However, in 2004 observations with the STIS, Hubble's High Precision Spectrometer, pointed to the existence of warm chromospheric plasma at least one arcsecond away from the star. At a distance of 197%, the size of the chromosphere could be up to 200 astronomical units. The observations have conclusively demonstrated that the warm chromospheric plasma spatially overlaps and co-exists with cool gas in Betelgeuse's gaseous envelope as well as with the dust in its circumstellar dust shells see below. The first claim of a dust shell surrounding Betelgeuse was put forth in 1977 when it was noted that dust shells around mature stars often emit large amounts of radiation in excess of the photospheric contribution. 
Using heterodyne interferometry, it was concluded that the red supergiant emits most of its excess radiation from positions beyond 12 stellar radii or roughly the distance of the Kuiper belt at 50 to 60 astronomical units, which depends on the assumed stellar radius. Since then, there have been studies done of this dust envelope at varying wavelengths yielding decidedly different results. Studies from the 1990s have estimated the inner radius of the dust shell anywhere from 0.5 to 1.0 arcseconds, or 100 to 200 astronomical units. These studies point out that the dust environment surrounding Betelgeuse is not static. In 1994, it was reported that Betelgeuse undergoes sporadic decades long dust production, followed by inactivity. In 1997, significant changes in the dust shell's morphology in one year were noted, suggesting that the shell is asymmetrically illuminated by a stellar radiation field strongly affected by the existence of photospheric hotspots. The 1984 report of a giant asymmetric dust shell 1% astronomical units has not been corroborated by recent studies, although another published the same year said that three dust shells were found extending four light years from one side of the decaying star, suggesting that Betelgeuse sheds its outer layers as it moves, although the exact size of the two outer CO shells remains elusive. Preliminary estimates suggest that one shell extends from about 1.5 to 4. 0 arcseconds and the other expands as far as 7.0 arcseconds. Assuming the Jovian orbit of 5.5 astronomical units as the star radius, the inner shell would extend roughly 50 to 150 stellar radii, approximately 300 to 800 astronomical units, with the outer one as far as 250 stellar radii, approximately 1400 astronomical units. The Sun's heliopause is estimated at about 100 astronomical units, so the size of this outer shell would be almost 14 times the size of the solar system. Topic: <laughs> Supersonic bow shock. Betelgeuse is traveling supersonically through the interstellar medium at a speed of 30 kilometers per second, i.e. approximately 6.3 astronomical units per year, creating a bow shock. The shock is not created by the star, but by its powerful stellar wind as it ejects vast amounts of gas into the interstellar medium at a speed of 17 km per second, heating the material surrounding the star, thereby making it visible in infrared light. Because Betelgeuse is so bright, it was only in 1997 that the bow shock was first imaged. The cometary structure is estimated to be at least one parsec wide, assuming a distance of 643 light years. Hydrodynamic simulations of the bow shock made in 2012 indicate that it is very young less than 30,000 years old suggesting two possibilities that Betelgeuse moved into a region of the interstellar medium with different properties only recently, or that Betelgeuse has undergone a significant transformation producing a changed stellar wind. A 2012 paper, proposed that this phenomenon was caused by Betelgeuse transitioning from a blue supergiant BSG to a red supergiant RSG. There is evidence that in the late evolutionary stage of a star like Betelgeuse, such stars may undergo rapid transitions from red to blue and vice versa on the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, with accompanying rapid changes to their stellar winds and bow shocks. Moreover, if future research bears out this hypothesis, Betelgeuse may prove to have traveled close to 200,000 astronomical units as a red supergiant scattering as much as 3m along its trajectory. Topic: <inaudible> Evolution. Betelgeuse is a red supergiant that has evolved from an O-type main sequence star. Its core will eventually collapse, producing a supernova explosion and leaving behind a compact remnant. The details depend on the exact initial mass and other physical properties of that main sequence star. Topic. So far The initial mass of Betelgeuse can only be estimated by testing different stellar evolutionary models to match its current observed properties. The unknowns of both the models and the current properties mean that there is considerable uncertainty in Betelgeuse's initial appearance, but its mass is usually estimated to have been in the range of 10 to 25 m, with modern models finding values of 15 to 20 m. Its chemical makeup can be reasonably assumed to have been around 70% hydrogen, 28% helium, and 2.4% heavy elements, slightly more metal-rich than the Sun but otherwise similar. 
The initial rotation rate is more uncertain, but models with slow to moderate initial rotation rates produce the best matches to Betelgeuse's current properties. That main sequence version of Betelgeuse would have been a hot luminous star with a spectral type such as O9V. A 15M star would take between 11.5 and 15 million years to reach the red supergiant stage, with more rapidly rotating stars taking the longest. Rapidly rotating 20M stars take only 9.3 million years to reach the red supergiant stage, while 20M stars with slow rotation take only 8.1 million years. These form the best estimates of Betelgeuse's current age, with a preferred age since the zero age main sequence of 8.0 to 8.5 million years for a 20M star with no rotation. The time spent so far as a red supergiant can be estimated by comparing mass loss rates to the observed circumstellar material, as well as the abundances of heavy elements at the surface. Estimates range from 20,000 years to a maximum of 140,000 years. Betelgeuse appears to undergo short periods of heavy mass loss and is a runaway star moving rapidly through space, so comparisons of its current mass loss to the total lost mass are difficult. The surface of Betelgeuse shows enhancement of nitrogen, relatively low levels of carbon, and a high proportion of 13C relative to 12C, all indicative of a star that has experienced the first dredge up. However, the first dredge up occurs soon after a star reaches the red supergiant phase and so this only means that Betelgeuse has been a red supergiant for at least a few thousand years. The best prediction is that Betelgeuse has already spent around 40,000 years as a red supergiant, having left the main sequence perhaps one million years ago. The current mass can be estimated from evolutionary models from the initial mass and the expected mass lost so far. For Betelgeuse, the total mass lost is predicted to be no more than about 1 m, giving a current mass of 19.4 to 19.7 m, considerably higher than estimated by other means such as pulsational properties or limb darkening models. Topic. Approaching supernova All stars more massive than about 10 m are expected to end their lives when their core collapses, typically producing a supernova explosion. Up to about 15 m, a type 2 p supernova is always produced from the red supergiant stage. More massive stars can lose mass quickly enough that they evolve towards higher temperatures before their cores can collapse, particularly for rotating stars and models with especially high mass loss rates. These stars can produce type 2L or type IIb supernovae from yellow or blue supergiants, or type IB, C supernovae from wolf rayet stars. Models of rotating 20M stars predict a peculiar type 2 supernova similar to SN1987A from a blue supergiant progenitor. On the other hand, non-rotating 20M models predict a type 2P supernova from a red supergiant progenitor. The time until Betelgeuse explodes depends on the predicted initial conditions and on the estimate of the time already spent as a red supergiant. The total lifetime from the start of the red supergiant phase to core collapse varies from about 300,000 years for a rotating 25M star, 550,000 years for a rotating 20M star, and up to a million years for a non-rotating 15M star. Given the estimated time since Betelgeuse became a red supergiant, estimates of its remaining lifetime range from a best guess of under 100,000 years for a non-rotating 20M model to far longer for rotating models or lower mass stars. Betelgeuse's suspected birthplace in the Orion OB1 association is the location of several previous supernovae. It is believed that runaway stars may be caused by supernovae, and there is strong evidence that OB stars Mu Columbi, A Origae and 53 Arietis all originated from such explosions in Oreo B1 2.2, 2.7 and 4.9 million years ago. A typical type 2p supernova emits 2 times 1046 J of neutrinos and produces an explosion with a kinetic energy of 2 times 1044 J as seen from Earth. It would have a peak apparent magnitude of about -12.4. It may outshine the full moon and would be easily visible in daylight. This type of supernova would remain at roughly constant brightness for two to three months before rapidly dimming. The visible light is produced mainly by the radioactive decay of cobalt, and maintains its brightness due to the increasing transparency of the cooling hydrogen ejected by the supernova. 
Due to misunderstandings caused by the 2009 publication of the star's 15% contraction, apparently of its outer atmosphere, Betelgeuse has frequently been the subject of scare stories and rumors suggesting that it will explode within a year, leading to exaggerated claims about the consequences of such an event. The timing and prevalence of these rumors have been linked to broader misconceptions of astronomy, particularly to doomsday predictions relating to the Mayan calendar. Betelgeuse is not likely to produce a gamma ray burst and is not close enough for its X rays, ultraviolet radiation, or ejected material to cause significant effects on Earth. Following Betelgeuse's supernova, a small dense remnant will be left behind, either a neutron star or black hole. This is predicted to be a neutron star of approximately 1.5 m. Topic. Ethnological attributes Topic. Spelling and pronunciation Betelgeuse has been known as Betelgeu, and in German Betelgeuse according to Bode. Betelgeu and Betelgeuse were used until the early 20th century, when the spelling Betelgeuse became universal. There is no consensus for the correct pronunciation of the name, and pronunciations for the star are as varied as its spellings. Oxford English Dictionary and Royal Astronomical Society of Canada Oxford English Dictionary Canadian Oxford Dictionary, Webster's Collegiate Dictionary The Friendly Stars Etymology <inaudible> 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 Betelgeuse is often mistranslated as armpit of the central one. In his 1899 work Star Names and Their Meanings, American amateur naturalist Richard Hinckley Allen stated the derivation was from the apt algza it al jauza, which he claimed degenerated into a number of forms including bed elgays, bait algays, bet elgays, betijus, and more, to the forms Betelgeuse, 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 and Betelgeuse. The star was named Beldenjus in the Alfonsini tables, an Italian Jesuit priest and astronomer Giovanni Battista Riccioli had called it Bechtelgeus or Bedaljus. Paul Kunich, professor of Arabic studies at the University of Munich, refuted Allen's derivation and instead proposed that the full name is a corruption of the Arabic it al-jza yad al-jauza meaning, the hand of al-jauza, i.e., Orion. European mistransliteration into medieval Latin led to the first character Y, Y with two dots underneath being misread as AB, B with only one dot underneath. During the Renaissance, the star's name was written as Bait Aljza Bait al Jauza, House of Orion, or Beat Aljza Bat al Jauza, incorrectly thought to mean Armpit of Orion. A true translation of Armpit would be apt, transliterated as it. This led to the modern rendering as Betelgeuse. Other writers have since accepted Kunich's explanation. The last part of the name, El Jus, comes from the Arabic Aljza al Jauza, a historical Arabic name of the constellation Orion, a feminine name in Old Arabian legend, and of uncertain meaning. Because Jews Jwz, the root of Jauza, means middle, Al Jauza roughly means the central one. The modern Arabic name for Orion is Aljbar al Jabar, the giant. Although the use of Aljza al Jauza in the name of the star has continued. The 17th century English translator Edmund Chilmead gave it the name Ied al Jews, Orion's Hand, from Christmanus. Other Arabic names recorded include Al Yad al Yamna, the right hand, Al Dira, the arm, and Al Mankib, the shoulder, all appended to, of the giant, as Mink Aljza Mankib al Jauza. Topic. Other names Other names for Betelgeuse included the Persian Basin, the arm, and Coptic Claria, an armlet. Bahu was its Sanskrit name, as part of a Hindu understanding of the constellation as a running antelope or stag. In traditional Chinese astronomy, Betelgeuse was known as Kinsusi, Shangshusi, the fourth star of the constellation of three stars, as the Chinese constellation Kinsu originally referred to the three stars in the girdle of Orion. This constellation was ultimately expanded to ten stars, but the earlier name stuck. In Japan, the Taira, or Heike, clan adopted Betelgeuse and its red color as its symbol, calling the star Heike Boshi, Ping Jia Xing, while the Minamoto, or Genji, clan had chosen Rigel and its white color. 
The two powerful families fought a legendary war in Japanese history, the stars seen as facing each other off and only kept apart by the belt. In Tahitian lore, Betelgeuse was one of the pillars propping up the sky, known as Anna Veru, the pillar to sit by. It was also called Taurua Nui o Mir, great festivity in parental yearnings. A Hawaiian term for it was Kalua Koko, brilliant red star. The Lacandon people of Central America knew it as Choctulix, red butterfly. Astronomy writer Robert Burnham Jr. proposed the term Padparadasha which denotes a rare orange sapphire in India, for the star. Mythology <inaudible> 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 With the history of astronomy intimately associated with mythology and astrology before the scientific revolution, the red star, like the planet Mars that derives its name from a Roman war god, has been closely associated with the martial archetype of conquest for millennia, and by extension, the motif of death and rebirth. Other cultures have produced different myths. Stephen R. Wilk has proposed the constellation of Orion could have represented the Greek mythological figure Pelops, who had an artificial shoulder of ivory made for him, with Betelgeuse as the shoulder, its color reminiscent of the reddish-yellow sheen of ivory. In the Americas, Betelgeuse signifies a severed limb of a man figure Orion. The Taulipang of Brazil know the constellation as Zalilkawai, a hero whose leg was cut off by his wife, with the variable light from Betelgeuse linked to the severing of the limb. Similarly, the Lakota people of North America see it as a chief whose arm has been severed. The Wardaman people of Northern Australia knew the star as Yajungan, owl eyes flicking, its variable light signifying its intermittent watching of ceremonies led by the red kangaroo leader Rigel. In South African mythology, Betelgeuse was perceived as a lion casting a predatory gaze toward the three zebras represented by Orion's belt, a Sanskrit name for Betelgeuse as Ardra, the moist one eponymous of the Ardra lunar mansion in Hindu astrology. The Rigvedic god of storms Rudra presided over the star, this association was linked by 19th-century star enthusiast Richard Hinckley Allen to Orion's stormy nature. The constellations in Macedonian folklore represented agricultural items and animals, reflecting their village way of life. To them, Betelgeuse was Orage, the plowman, alongside the rest of Orion which depicted a plow with oxen. The rising of Betelgeuse at around 3 a.m. in late summer and autumn signified the time for village men to go to the fields and plow. To the Inuit, the appearance of Betelgeuse and Bellatrix high in the southern sky after sunset marked the beginning of spring and lengthening days in late February and early March. The two stars were known as a kutujuk, those two placed far apart. Referring to the distance between them, mainly to people from North Baffin Island and Melville Peninsula, the opposed locations of Orion and Scorpius, with their corresponding bright variable red stars Betelgeuse and Antares, were noted by ancient cultures around the world. The setting of Orion and rising of Scorpius signify the death of Orion by the Scorpion. In China they signify brothers and rivals Shen and Shang. The Batak of Sumatra marked their new year with the first new moon after the sinking of Orion's belt below the horizon, at which point Betelgeuse remained, like the tail of a rooster. The positions of Betelgeuse and Antares at opposite ends of the celestial sky were considered significant and their constellations were seen as a pair of scorpions. Scorpion days marked as nights that both constellations could be seen. In popular culture As one of the brightest and best-known stars, Betelgeuse has featured in many works of fiction. The star's unusual name inspired the title of the 1988 film Betelgeuse, and script writer Michael McDowell was impressed by how many people made the connection. In the popular science fiction series The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, Ford Prefect was from a small planet somewhere in the vicinity of Betelgeuse. Two American Navy ships were named after the star, both of them World War II vessels. The USS Betelgeuse AKA-11 launched in 1939 and USS Betelgeuse AK-260 launched in 1944. In 1979, a French supertanker named Betelgeuse was moored off Witty Island discharging oil when it exploded, killing 50 people in one of the worst disasters in Ireland's history, the Dave Matthews Band song, Black and Blue Bird. References the star, the Philip Larkin poem, The North Ship, found in the collection of the same name, references the star in the section titled, Above 80 Degrees North, which reads, A woman has ten claws. 
sang the drunken bosun farther than Betelgeuse more brilliant than Orion or the planets Venus and Mars the star flames on the ocean a woman has ten claws sang the drunken bosun Humbert Wolff wrote a poem about Betelgeuse which was set to music by Gustav Holst topic notes topic references topic external links surface imaging of betelgeuse with coast and the wht interferometric images taken at different wavelengths near mid and far infrared infrared processing and analysis center ipac webpage showing pictures at various wavelengths a pod pictures, Mars and Orion over Monument Valley skyscape showing the relative brightness of Betelgeuse and Rigel. Orion, head-to-toe breathtaking vista the Orion molecular cloud complex from Rogelio Bernal Andrio. The spotty surface of Betelgeuse a reconstructed image showing two hot spots, possibly convection cells. Simulated supergiant star Freytag's star in a box, illustrating the nature of Betelgeuse's monster granules. Why stars twinkle image of Betelgeuse showing the effect of atmospheric twinkling in a telescope. Betelgeuse explosion simulation Simulation of Betelgeuse explosion as seen from Earthred supergiant movie Numerical simulation of a red supergiant star like Betelgeuse. <laughs>